Hey there. I'm going to talk about drawing the figure a little bit. I get asked questions quite a lot. Uh, advice. Uh, for me to give advice about it. It's a, <clears throat> a huge, huge subject um, which necessarily begets some simplification. Um, the thing about the human body is that uh, all the aspects that it has, that it contains, that it is, that it does, is infinite. It's as infinite as the universe. Uh, when you go down to the cellular level of the body, the atomic level, the mechanical level, uh, cellular, did I say that? Um, and then on top of that, all the uh, motions it's capable of, um, you know, uh, dancing, fighting, um, everything, uh, sitting, laying down, blah, 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 on and on and on and on. Um, there's literally no end to it. So, necessarily we sort of have to simplify things. And what happens with uh, drawing figures is that um, young artists, uh, all artists in a way, want to get to a point where they're proficient and they can express themselves and do figures that uh, they're, they're happy with, that they're proud of. Um, so, this is part of the reason there are so many styles today where uh, things are quite simplified. Uh, manga is a simplified style, superhero comics are the same thing. And what it does is it allows people to stop at a certain point and say, okay, well this is, I'm proficient enough um, in terms of producing what I want to produce and they just leave it at that. So, in uh, the world of drawing, especially in comics, Neil Adams called it uh, Bigfoot and Littlefoot. So Littlefoot is very realistic, detail-oriented drawing, and Bigfoot is basically uh, the most simplified, cartoony, uh, Charles Schultz peanut sort of approach. So anyway, those are the vast possibilities, and it's very daunting in a way. And as I mentioned, having a single style can be easier um, especially if you have a style that's popular, it'll enable you to um, earn a living, make some money. You can also um, work on developing your own unique style, which doesn't necessarily, is, isn't so open-ended into the sheer infinity of the complexity of the body and everything, but it has an emotional appeal and impact to people and therefore enables you to become a successful artist. So, um, there's a simple way uh, to begin thinking about the body is the body is a machine. And of course, we occupy the body. We're not, our, our inner selves aren't mechanical. But the body itself is a machine. It operates with pulleys, hinges, uh, the muscles are mechanical, the, um, the guts are chemical processing plants. They work in a mechanical fashion. So, um, uh, pro probably, to my mind, the most important aspect of um, a figure is the line that passes through the figure. Now, of course, there's not really a line, but uh, we are bilaterally symmetrical uh, beings. Here's a head, a rib cage, a pelvis. Everything on this side of the line is the same as on that side of the line. This line um, is also a line of balance because it goes down to the core of the earth where gravity comes from and this line comes out the top of your head and some say it goes to the core of the galaxy. I wouldn't be surprised. So anyway, this line, basically everything comes off this line. This line is also key to whatever mannequin you choose to use when you're drawing. Uh, the thing about your mannequin is that if the mannequin is correct, then you don't necessarily need to ha know every single muscle, tendon, joint, and all the surface detail in order to have a satisfactory drawing. But it's very important that your mannequin is correct in terms of proportion, and then you can play with the mannequin in terms of your poses. So, you can see here, I'll lay in a figure quickly with the mannequin and now everything is there that I need the basic information to take this, add things to it, 
flesh it out, and have a fully realized pose. So this is essentially what you want to begin with. Now whether or not you know how many ribs go there, or exactly how this muscle group operates, etc., you can pick that up later. You can add that as you learn. And that's basically what it's about. You never stop learning. You're always going to be picking up new things, new tricks, new techniques, new observations, and adding them onto your extant body of knowledge. God, I sound like a freaking professor, don't I? Well, I've had to go through all this myself. I got it from books. Um, a little bit of observation. You know, there's some question people ask about drawing from life, um, drawing from models, and it's like certainly observation is important, but it's also very important to understand how the body works as a machine. So you can draw from live models all day long and you can get to be very good at uh, under, you know, observing how light falls on the forms and you can absolutely learn a lot from that. But um, artists that do that, a lot of times if you take the model away from them, then they, they're lost. They can't draw anything. Draw, understanding the body as a machine is what allows you to, um, to draw from your imagination and to make the body do all sorts of things that you want it to do. Uh, of course, there are mistakes that people can make in terms of um, the body not looking right, the proportions being wrong, uh, things like that. Certainly there's room for exaggeration, but um, things like proportion are things that need to be learned early on. Measuring by heads, head, head to navel, head to crotch, foreheads to feet, also foreheads. Now we know this is an idealized figure, it's eight heads tall. And that's something that you learn about too. And it also reflects, you know, there again, the complexity of drawing. So anyway, the basic foundation of your mannequin, the masses, head, chest, hips, how limbs come away from it, um, is very important. Now, an exercise I did when I was younger, I took photographs from uh, different magazines. Um, one magazine was Sports Illustrated. And there would be scenes of football players smashing into each other and things like that. And this guy's down here, and this guy's reaching up for a pass. And it was valuable to trace over, take a big marker, trace over these lines, get used to where the simplified masses and limbs are falling. Because when you do that, ooh, Terrible head there. I slipped. Um, when you do that, then you um, can translate that understanding and that confidence into creating your own poses. So anyway, that is what uh, Professor Hoffman would like to see, is page after page of figures doing things. Now, you can also feel the pose yourself. This is very important because it stops you from becoming lost in a sort of a, a, an abstract world where you're dealing with you know, lines and shapes and they don't necessarily look human and you kind of get away from the realism and you can literally wind up floundering around in this world of sort of um, idealized and intellectualized um, shapes and things and, and you lose uh, semblance of reality. And it happens to just about every artist. It's happened to me. It's happened to the really good artists too. And so you want to try to come back to that. And one way to um, do that is to imagine your own body in the pose. So it's one thing to think about, oh, I'm an artist, I'm drawing, and these are the masses, and you're thinking in those terms. Another way to think is that um, I I am the model. So this is me. This is my chest. These are my arms. This is my head. These are my hips, my legs. And what exactly am I doing? 
So you can do the same thing for women too. For a lot of people, it's um, you know liberating, kind of understanding what it feels like to be the opposite sex for five minutes to understand that the, there's a difference in balance. The uh, center of gravity is slightly lower. Uh, limbs tend toward inward arcs of motion and it's instead of outward arcs, and that's an important point too. Men's limbs are designed to strike, throw, hit, hurl, things like that. So necessarily the limbs tend to splay away from the body. The more athletic and the more action-packed the pose is, the more the limbs and heads and everything will splay away from the body. Female figures, on the other hand, tend toward inward arcs of motion. The elbows will be drawn in, the hands will be drawn in, possibly. Not that women can't do this, they can. But uh, knees are close together, in a sense hobbled. Um, there's a lot more touching of the body itself than typically with men. So anyway, you see how big a subject it is. I'm going to leave it here for right now and um, just reiterate for a moment how critically important it is to nail this. And you're really only talking about these three masses, the head, chest, hips, and then lines for hips, uh, or femur, rather, leg, calf, upper arm, forearm, neck, you can um, idealize, stylize, you know, sh shapes, triangular shapes and things for hands and feet. But this is basically what you want to get. This is also like the skeleton. Important to, re to remember that. Uh, if you have any reference material of actual skeletons, complete skeletons with rib cages and everything, you might as well go on ahead and learn that now too, because that is part of your foundation. This is basically, an, as I said, an idealized skeleton. So when you understand the skeleton, then it becomes a lot easier to apply the muscles onto the skeleton. Then you know where they're attached, where they uh, join the bone, and so on. So I'm going to have to stop myself now because, as I said, it's a huge subject. I can go on for literally years, but I'm not going to do that today. So good luck to you. Bye-bye.